measures of how data is dispersed away from its center is called the standard deviation. Now the standard deviation has a different formula depending on whether we have the entire set of data of interest or whether we have a subgroup of the data of interest in just a sample. Most of the time when they ask us to find a standard deviation, they're asking us to find a standard deviation of a sample. And so that's the example that I'm going to run through here. Um, if they specifically somehow give you wording that you do have the entire data set for the entire population of interest, then the only difference between the two formulas that you have is what's in the denominator of the fraction underneath the radical. In the denominator of the fraction underneath the radical for the population standard deviation, you divide by the total number of data values in your population. And in the denominator on the fraction underneath the radical for the sample, you divide by the number in your sample minus one. So that gives us an adjustment for the situation of just having the sample of the population instead of the entire population. Now, there are two formulas that are listed here for our sample standard deviation. The first one is the formula that helps us understand what standard deviation is actually telling us, but it's not really friendly in trying to use it for calculations if we have a mean that is a decimal that's a non-terminating decimal. With rearranging of this using the properties of summations and squaring out the binomials, you can rearrange it to have a formula that is much more friendly to actually getting the same value as you would for this one, but yet not having to deal with all of the decimals at each stage of the game. So this is more of your computational or calculating formula, this second one down, and the first one is to more for us to understand what's going on. So let's talk about what they're trying to tell us in this formula, and then we'll do our next example to find the standard deviation using the definition of it, and then show that we'll get the same value if we have the calculating one. So let's get started. First of all, notice that when we have a mixture of operations, we're supposed to do the operations inside the parentheses first. Now what the notation is telling us inside these parentheses is x minus x with a bar over it is in a quantity that's being squared. Well, x is representing an individual data value, and the x with a bar over it is denoting the sample mean. So for each data value, we will subtract off the sample mean and we'll get a number. We'll square that number and do it for every single one of our data values. Once we get all of the squares of those differences, we will add them up. This capital sigma is to add up those values. And we'll get a total in our numerator that will then divide by our number of data values in our sample minus one, get our quotient, and then after we get our quotient, we'll take the square root of that number to give our sample standard deviation. Now what is this doing for us? Well, the standard deviation is giving us a, a sort of an average idea of a value that the average distance that your data values are away from the middle. So since it kind of gives you an average, averaging so to speak, distance the data values are away from the middle, it tells you if the data values are clustered really close to the mean or if they're spread really far away from the mean. A smaller standard deviation means the data values are all centered really close to the mean, and a larger standard deviation means you have data values that are spread away from it. So look, let's look at this sample set of data here. I have the values 1, 1, 5, 9, 9. Now if I'm going to use this definition formula for my sample standard deviation, because it says to find the sample standard deviation for this data, the first thing I need to do is find my sample mean. And the sample mean, remember, you get by adding up your data values, so 1 plus 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 9, and dividing it by the number of data values you have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when we add that together in the numerator, we get 25 
divide by 5, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. My sample mean for this data set is 5. Now we want to find the difference or the distance each value is away from the mean. So I'm going to make a column with my x's and then just write in the numbers that you got for your data set. So I have 1, 1, 5, 9, 9. Now for each of these I need to subtract off the mean. So I'll make another column heading showing that I'm taking the number in my first column and subtracting from that the sample mean, which in this case is 5. All right. So 1 subtract 5 would be a negative 4. 1 subtract 5 is a negative 4. 5 subtract 5 is 0. 9 subtract 5 is 4. And 9 subtract 5 is 4. So notice the data values that are below the mean have a negative difference. And data values that are above the mean have a positive difference. So I can't really add them up at this stage or it would just give me a zero value. So that comes in the next stage where I take that answer I got in the column that we just finished and I'm going to square those numbers. Negative 4 quantity squared, negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. Negative 4 quantity squared is 16. 0 squared is 0. 4 squared is 16. And 4 squared is 16. So, so far we've done each of those parts of taking each number minus the sample mean and squaring it, individual number by individual number. Next up, we want to add up those values that we got. So when I add these up, 16 plus 16 is 32, and I have another 32 here. So 32 plus 32 is 64, plus 0 is still 64. So that gives me that numerator. So now my s is equal to the square root of, in my numerator I have this total 64. In the denominator you take n minus 1. The number of my data values is, I have 5 data values, and 5 subtract 1 gives me a denominator of 4. So now when I look at doing the quotient, I have the square root of, well 64 divided by 4 is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. So I picked a data set that actually has very nice values in here that I calculated. I didn't get any decimals in it at all. So this formula didn't look that hard to work with. But believe me, if you have a mean where it doesn't have a division here that comes out as an integer value, then you can get decimals that are terminating at each of these stages. You're going to have decimals that are non-terminating, excuse me, that are non-terminating. So you're carrying all those digits along the way and it can become pretty cumbersome. In the next segment, I'm going to show the same data set but using the calculating form of finding the sample standard deviation instead of the definition form of it.